and they think PPC is going to be some, you know, magic silver bullet that just because they listen to a few episodes of this podcast, they're suddenly like millionaires overnight. And the, the fact of the matter is, if you're trying to be profitable with your brand new product from the very beginning, it's just going to take years of that slow, steady growth to get there. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of That Amazon Ads Podcast. Here today to talk about one of the biggest questions we get asked all the time is, you know, how to launch products on Amazon and what types of strategies should you be employing and deploying on your new listings as you're trying to add new products to the ecosystem on Amazon. We're here to talk about all of that today and much more. And I've got Steven with me as always. How you doing, Steven? Doing great, Andrew. This topic request came from our Discord community. So if you ever want to recommend a podcast episode or a topic for us to cover, that's exactly where you can do it. Join the Discord, that Amazon Ads Podcast Discord. Link is in the description and feel free to let us know what topics you want us to cover. For sure. Yeah, we just got back from Amazon Accelerate as well. Um, and at the time of this recording, this is going to go live on Prime Day as well. So just a couple of cool little oh, tidbits nice. there. We just, yeah, we got back from Accelerate. Um, I actually got asked a couple of questions about product launching and all that type of stuff while we were there. But overall, really good experience, um, had a good time. But we'll also be at Unboxed here in just uh, a week after this recording. So make sure you guys hit us up if, if you're going to be there. I'm happy to link up and, and chat through everything. We got to meet a lot of really cool people and people we've had on the podcast, uh, got to meet them in person at Accelerate, which is pretty awesome. So definitely let us know if you'll be there. Good stuff. All right, Andrew, I think we should jive, dive into this. Uh, I was going to say jump into and dive into, and then jive came out. So let's do it. Let's jive our way over into this topic. Let's do it. So first things first, when it comes to understanding your goals for a product launch, we need to come to grips with the Amazon product launch trilemma. And we're going to throw up a visual here that will show you what we're talking about. And for our listening audience, I will describe to you, but you've probably heard of a trilemma before. It's basically a triangle with three different sides, and you can only ever pick two sides and I just got a uh, some deja vu so maybe we've talked about this before like over a year ago in one of our episodes but Andrew did I tell you about the uh, the college trilemma that someone told me when I was uh, in the dorms and uh, of my undergrad and and was going through a hard time did I tell you about this I haven't heard it what is it so so he told me one of like the the upperclassmen was saying that you can choose to have either like going through college you can either have a social life, good grades, or sleep. And he was saying that you can only have two of those. So you can have like a social life and, and get a lot of sleep, but you're not going to get good grades. Or you can get good grades and good sleep, but you're not going to have a social life. And that was really helpful for me because I just decided, all right, cool. Like college is a short time. Uh, sleep isn't that important. So I chose a social life and, and grades. And I probably averaged like three to four hours of sleep for like four years. <laughs> so... Yeah, that that's good advice. I wish somebody would have told me that going into college. I would have been super helpful. <laughs> what did you do? I tried to go all three. I just said all three yeah. all in, tried to do it all at once and it didn't work out yeah. super well. <laughs> yeah. If you try to do all three, it just ends up being super stressful and, you know, panic inducing and uh, your overall quality of life goes down and you kind of just do all three of them moderately. And then that's just like super dissatisfying. So I think this is just a helpful kind of, uh, yeah, kind of taking hold of reality and what's actually achievable. So when it comes to the Amazon trilemma and launching a new product, the three points of this triangle are you can get sales volume or you can have profitability on those sales or you can make that matter happen quickly. So what we're talking about is you can get a lot of sales quickly, but you're not gonna be profitable or you can be profitable very quickly, like right from the beginning, you're just not gonna get a ton of sales volume, or you can work on getting sales volume profitably, but it's just gonna take a really long time. So those are kind of the, the three scenarios, and we're just gonna talk about each, each one of those. Yeah, yeah, very well said. I mean, I definitely think that most people, most brands, when they're asking this question about how to launch products, they are trying to do 
all three of these things all at once. That would be the dream scenario, the ideal scenario where they have a process, a system where they can just run it, run a new product through it and they're able to grow their sales volume profitably and do it very, very quickly. That's what everybody wants. And um, unfortunately, that's not always how it works and not always how it goes. And, and sometimes you have to kind of pick and choose what, ki what kind of strategy or what your goals are for an individual product. And I think that most people are kind of asking the question to figure out what are the strategies and tactics that are used whenever you're trying to go very quickly and you see rank go up very quickly. Like, what are those things and how can I mix those and interlace those into my own system of launching, whatever that may be, um, to profitably grow my sales and, and do it, you know, over the long haul. So I think most people are trying to figure out like what those things are to do it quickly, but most people, you know, they don't have the, the big upfront capital to burn through and stuff like that, that is typically required. And, and so, you know, most people are trying to be profitable initially, at least, um, pretty soon on just to, to stay afloat. Um, but you know, if you're trying to go for a really fast growth, really quick speed, it's going to require you to sacrifice here and there. So, um, I think it's just important to have those two, those things in mind. Like you can't have it all. Um, you have to kind of pick and choose what strategies there are. So I guess the first one, I guess we can talk about Steven is just a, a slow, steady, soft launch. This is what, um, you know, people who are really trying to be profitable from the beginning, uh, are, are doing They're They're not really focused on trying to grow sales volume really quickly. They just want to get their product listed. They want to start getting some sales and they want to be profitable with each of those sales. Um, and, mm -hmm. and this is, you know, just, I see this a lot with like mom and pop sellers. I've worked with a couple of people like just kind of coming on to Amazon. They, they maybe have their own physical product. They've been selling, you know, locally for a while, but you know, they just want to come on and see some results, see some profit initially and, and start getting some sales through a new channel that maybe they weren't on before. Yeah. Which is understandable because for a lot of people after buying your your first big uh, box of inventory, you know, you could have invested like $20,000 into those units trying to get them onto Amazon. And after that kind of investment, you're just not really interested in, uh, you know, losing money on your your PPC and, and on the product. So so I would say that's that's probably a pretty popular one, uh, at least like a lot of with with the Ad Labs customer support. I get people coming to me all the time who are, you know, brand new startups. And they're like, you know, they're, you know, they have a brand new product, never sold a single unit before. It's a brand new brand. Like they've, their whole entire Amazon brand has never sold a single unit before. And they're like, how come I'm not, you know, making $10,000 a month in sales yet, or, or $10,000, I should say, in profit a month yet? Like what's going on? Like what's going on with my PPC? And they think PPC is going to be some, you know, magic silver bullet that just because they listen to a few episodes of this podcast, they're suddenly like millionaires overnight. And the the fact of the matter is, if you're trying to be very, if you're trying to be profitable with your brand new product from the very beginning, it's just going to take years of that slow, steady growth to get there. Just, yeah, slowly getting one new review at a time and just just building that up. But yeah, it's going to take time. So, you know, you just got to kind of be be real there and and accept that fact. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the 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 landscape of Amazon has really changed a lot over the years. It used to be the case where you could do that. You could buy a $20,000 of inventory, ship it into Amazon and be able to affordably run PPC and scale those campaigns just because of how uncompetitive it was and just how cheaply you could drive that traffic. There was such an arbitrage between the price of that traffic and the traffic that you could get and you could run through PPC on Amazon on platform and really elicit that flywheel effect on platform. It's just much more competitive now. And those CPCs are a lot more competitive and um, you just can't afford to drive as much traffic through PPC alone. And you got to kind of lean on some other, other areas for, for growth or be willing to sacrifice some of that profit in order to get that volume. So that brings us into the next yeah. one, which is aiming for more break even, um, which is generally what we recommend for, for new, new product launches and somewhere around break even. Sometimes it even requires you to go above break even initially to, uh, get that volume and get that velocity going. Um, but this is somewhere in between the two. So this is, you know, kind of not really solely focused on driving profit. You still want to be profitable, um, or, you know, soon be soon, be profitable soon. Um, but you're not really just trying to blow through everything and blow through, uh, your dollars and not really focus on profit at all. And just focus on ranking. Um, this would allow you to kind of 
slowly build. Um, if you're targeting break even, you can be much more competitive in those searches and go after some keywords that might drive some some ranking velocity and, and boost some ranking a little bit for you. Um, but generally speaking, this is really where most of most people fall when they're launching and um, you know just trying to get the get the wheels going. They're okay with being not as profitable initially while they get those initial reviews, get the uh, first couple sales and all that type of stuff really going. Um, so that, you know, two months down the line, when they've got a hundred reviews, those conversion rates are looking a lot better and that performance is uh, starting to improve profits, getting better as volume is, is going up. Yep. And I just realized what would probably be helpful to the listeners. I'm going to outline really quickly. We should have done this first, but what, what the three, I'm just going to state the three, uh, different launch strategies, the three different sides of the trilemma that you could choose from. So the last one we just mentioned, uh, or the first one we, we mentioned is profitable from the start where you're you're prioritizing profit quickly so that's speed and profit but you're not going to get a ton of sales volume there and then the second one that, that andrew was just describing is uh breaking even from the beginning in which you're you're trying to focus on getting a lot of volume profitably but it's just going to take you a long time to get there so so you're foregoing speed and just you're, you're not planning on getting either of those right away. You're, you're just trying to like kind of find the balance there. And then the last one is basically selling at a loss. And it's the rank driven approach where you're trying to get a lot of volume quickly and you're, you're skipping out on profit. So, yeah. So, Andrew, were you saying that this one trying to the, the middle ground one that's kind of focusing on volume and profit, but just kind of bypassing the or I guess a or or what's the word, deprioritizing speed and just like playing the long game, would you say, because it's a little confusing actually, because the, the first one we mentioned, we said you're profitable from the beginning, but it's going to take a long time to get there. So I want to clarify, like, it sounds like we're mm -hmm. foregoing speed on both of these, but what the speed is actually like being attributed to is uh, on the first one, we're saying the profit is happening quickly, but, but not the volume is happening. Like the volume is going to take a long time to get there. The second one, you can get a little bit more volume uh, and you're a little bit less profit, but overall, like to, to get both of those going, that's going to take some, some time. So I'm not sure if that made sense or if I just made everything much more confusing. No, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. For the, for breaking even, you know, you're able to get that volume a little quicker. Um, and you're starting to, you're still profitable, still able to, you know, see a return on that investment on your inventory. But, um, you know, you're, you're kind of like, teeter-tottering between the two like you want to stay profitable but you're also trying to grow rank like it's a new product you want to get it out there you want to get some visibility and some velocity going behind it so we got to be willing to sacrifice some of that profit uh initially and so maybe we're not at our like ideal profit target for this product but hey we're in month one or month two of, of launching this product we aren't expecting to be um you know super profitable until month six in some cases so um you know you just got to kind of balance those two and, and figure out what which one you want to kind of go for initially yeah. And I would say for both of those first two options, uh, where you're, yeah, you're, you're just kind of being, you're, you're trying to keep profit at, at the core of the strategy. You, you know, if you're a brand new brand as well, selling on Amazon, like this is your first product and you're, you're trying to keep profit as, as one of your, your three, uh, or one of the two, I guess that you can, that you can choose from that's very much a don't quit your day job scenario. Like, you know, th whatever you're selling on Amazon is, is a side hustle and a, and a passion project that, you know, is going to take a couple of years before you can quit your job to, to really focus on that business. So probably important to give that, that word of caution as well. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, the people that you're going up against, the competitors that you're going up against on Amazon nowadays, like they have cash to burn. And so they, mm -hmm. they have 50 to a hundred thousand dollars. They can just burn through on testing out a product, experimenting on a new, a new category, a new product that they aren't currently selling just to see if it works. Because if it sticks, the payoff is massive in a lot of cases, like the, the volume on Amazon's huge. So, uh, if you can, forego and, and get through that initial period that it takes you to get to XYZ position and ranking and volume, then, you know, you're much more better suited for, for Amazon right now than uh, somebody who's just kind of like just getting started and, and needs that profit to, as the lifeblood of, of their business to reorder inventory next month or whatever it may be. So definitely have the uh, cards stacked against you um, in this, in this scenario, which kind of 
forces you to lean into more savvy methods, different strategies and ways that brands kind of go about figuring out what, what we should try to drive rank on or how to drive that rank. Um, and you know, it's for those brands with, with a lot of cash flow that have the capability to talk about these strategies and, and, uh, activate on them, on them. Um, so anything to add, Steven, uh, I got some, a couple things to dig into on the rank driven approach, but just wanted to give you a sec. Yeah. To I was going to say, in. yeah, let's get to, to the rank driven. Cause that's the fun one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. So first things first, when it comes to ranking, um, the, the first note I have is to be ready from day one with your listing. And Steve, I didn't want to take your thunder, Steven. So I want, I want you to talk about um, why should sellers have their listing ready from day one? Well, I would say it kind of applies to all of these really for any of, I mean, for any product launch, I would say you should always be mm. ready from day one. And it's actually not my thunder. It's uh, Awana from the Trivium group who uh, we, we were talking at Amazon Accelerate. We'll probably have her on as a guest sometime to dive a little bit more into it. But uh, she is a, a geek and she was looking through the, you know, Amazon's like A9 algorithm things, certain parts of it, they create patents around. And then when someone like files a patent, it's it's public information. So she was looking through the patents and she found this whole, I think it's like an 18 page long article describing what uh, what Amazon sellers call the honeymoon period, Amazon calls the cold start issue or the cold start service. And so people, there's been this pseudo myth where when you launch a new product for 30 or 60 days, uh, Amazon's going to just you know be very gracious and give you a ton of free traffic. And what she found when looking through the the cold start service paper is that, and we'll throw up a, an, a visual here so you can see what we're talking about. But essentially what the, what the paper says is that there's no 30 or 60 day period, but from the very beginning, Amazon looks at your product, they compare it to similar products and different search terms that like those products have sold for, and then they start testing your product in those same searches. And then within a, a matter of hours or perhaps just a few days, they're automatically putting you into a ranking. So if they when you first launch a product, you're going to get a few hours or maybe just one or two days of, of that honeymoon period that people call. It's like, it's, it's not 30 or 60 days. Like people think it's a very, very short time. And if you're not converting well, you're going to be pretty much instantly punished and just like pushed to the bottom of, of search. And it could be over within just a few days. So for that reason, that's why we, our, our big takeaway from that is in any of these listings, but especially if you're planning on doing the rank driven approach, which, which requires putting a ton of PPC spend behind to try to, to try to drive that extra visibility, you really, really, really need to have the listing be perfect. And we are talking perfect, like all images, all title work, bullet points, keywords, you've, you've just like, you've invested a ton of time and resources into making all that perfect because you're only going to get a few hours of that, of that grace kind of free impression traffic stuff. And if your product does well, then you, you'll be able to stay up there as, I'm, as I'm Amazon continues to do more testing and everything like that, so. Boom, yeah, very, very good points. And I think that's so important to lay out because in my experience anyway, whenever I'm working with brands, a lot of times they don't launch new products in a completely ready to go, fully optimized state almost all the time it's they have a product coming or they know it's coming they have a deadline or whatever they throw up the listing maybe get like that initial image maybe some maybe some secondary images to go along with it throw up a decent title and bullet points and hit go and you know that's pretty much they get it off the ground as quickly as possible and they get it listed as quickly as possible um but it may not be with the best images the best imagery the best title the best seo all that type of stuff already kind of built into it and so um, based on this paper, based on this patent, uh, sounds like we kind of need to make sure all that stuff is in in order, in place from the get-go uh, in order to really capitalize on the initial ranking of the product. Because if it's not, you know, like you said, can really hurt you and be a hindrance, uh, a big hurdle for you to have to overcome initially if you aren't set up that way, get suppressed really quickly. Um, this is one thing that could happen. Uh, but 
yeah, definitely think got to be ready to go from from day one, and that's super interesting to kind of hear it straight from the the horse's mouth. Yeah. <clears throat> now, something else that's important to know with or important to note with the rank driven approach is this is best for established brands with a lot of cash flow. So they have a bunch of other really strong selling products that are profitable. So they have that extra capital to invest in a, in a brand new product. And I'm also pretty convinced that Amazon has a, you know, we always talk about like a, a ad quality score or like a product query quality score. And I think there's also something as like a brand quality score. And if you're a seller that has a really low return rate and you've made Amazon a lot of money over the, over, you know, the past several years, Amazon's going to like you. They're going to trust you. So if you have a new product, you know, there will naturally be a little bit of a better boost there. Cause they'll say, Hey, you know, when this brand creates a new product, they usually perform pretty well versus someone who's completely new to the game and has no sales history. So, you know, if you are an established brand, you can probably focus on getting a lot of sales very quickly with this new product and just driving up those reviews, but you're probably going to have to do, do it at a loss because naturally just like, you're not going to have very high conversion rates, but when you don't have a ton of re reviews yet, and that's part of this uh, aggressive ranking, uh, product launch strategy is just trying to stimulate those, that sales velocity, that BSR getting more reviews so that your conversion rates can increase so that further down the road, you can then kind of focus on, on maintaining profitability and keeping that sales volume. But yeah. Yeah, that's such a good point. I, I definitely have seen that kind of brand effect take place. And I wonder how how much uh, the other brands products are kind of included in that training data and, and like kind of go into that prior prediction value of ranking and stuff like that for an individual product. Um, I'm sure it has some effect. I've definitely seen it in uh, some cases where, you know, got a new product, no reviews, like why the heck is it ranking um, so quickly? So um, certainly something to be said for that. One thing that, you know, you mentioned, Stephen, was just trying to get those reviews, those initial reviews. Um, and this is a really big piece of, of driving conversion on Amazon. Everybody knows reviews are super important. Um, and how you get those reviews is always a conundrum. Um, everybody is always either one, going to Vine, going to family, friends. There's certain ways you can go about getting those initial reviews. But at the end of the day, they are one of the most important factors for you. And uh, just wanted to kind of go through a couple options for you to think about or consider when trying to get those initial reviews. So first things first is always the Vine reviewer program. So this is where you put up a certain number of units that you're willing to give away. Amazon has their own program of reviewers that they will that can sign up and receive your product and they'll leave an honest review for it. Now, something interesting about the Vine reviewer program, and this is a common pain point with this, is that not you don't always get good reviews from vine uh, a lot of times you'll sign up for it and you know the people who are leaving the reviews will leave pretty honest feedback and sometimes that doesn't mean five stars sometimes that means three stars and you get um you know suppressed right out the gate with some pretty bad reviews uh somebody at accelerate told me the other day that in the contract for being a part of the amazon vine reviewer program they say that you're not allowed to always like leave uh, good reviews or positive reviews. And like, it has, you have to have like a certain amount of reviews that meet certain, uh, ratings or thresholds. And like, you can't, you know, basically it's like, you know, you can't always yeah. leave a five-star review, even if it's the best. So, uh, that was interesting. Yeah, so if you just left, yeah. So if you just, if you just left like nine, five-star reviews and, and you know, Amazon has a quota cause they don't want you to always just give a five-star review everywhere. They, cause that would, you know, they're trying to encourage, you know, really honest feedback. And I think they just know that by definition, not every single product out there is going to be worthy of five stars, but that does kind of mess things up because maybe they just left nine five-star reviews and now your product's next up in the Vine review program. And they're like, all right, well, I, I have to leave a negative review. So three stars. And then you're just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. I don't know exactly how it works on the back end or what, but like, yeah, that would certainly uh, be the case. I certainly have seen that where it's like the review sounds great. Like sound like you really like the product. Like why was it four stars, you know? And so I'm yeah. sure there's some of that pl at play there for sure. Um, but yeah, that's kind of one of the main things with Vine and, and one of the main, uh, headaches with it is you don't always know if those reviews are going to be good, but it is a pretty reliable place to go to try to get them. Sometimes it doesn't work, but for the most part it does. Um, next on the list is family friends. This is kind of an old school strategy, just getting your family and friends to buy and leave reviews for you. Again, this is 
uh, not advice, not Amazon advice, but you can do that. Uh, and then the other would just be giveaway platforms. You can do very similar thing to Vine, uh, just kind of getting, getting those paid for reviews. And um, I asked somebody, you can actually, there's some of these giveaway platforms and I asked somebody I'm working with, well, the one they use and they told they wouldn't tell me because uh, apparently they want to keep that close to the chest. But I also tried to find it and I couldn't find it. So apparently it's uh, pretty under wraps, whatever it is they're using, but giveaway platforms, they allow you to just put a quota of how many you want to give away. They have their own pool of, of subscribers that they give away products to. You can also pick and choose the keywords that you want to have them search under and buy the product through. So you get like a little bit of uh, rank boost on specific terms that you're trying to go after. Um, and that has been pretty powerful way for, for us to give away a, a decent volume of units to help stimulate some of that initial organic rank. And now when it comes to figuring out giveaways, uh, it's kind of transitioning into a different thing. But one thing that we're doing at this brand is looking at, you know, for a goal focused launch, the CEO is like, Hey, for this new product in this new category, we want to rank number 15, uh, by in the first like six months or whatever it is, or two months. Um, what we're doing is taking a lot of that prior data that we have from these giveaways, from our sales data. And we also have like a daily BSR tracker, all this type of stuff, combining all that data and figuring out a rough estimate of about how many units we need to give away to rank in certain positions. And so we're looking at, you know, our top 20 BSR in a category and say, Hey, we want to rank 15. We're looking at the estimated sales unit velocity on a monthly basis for that individual ASIN and um, basically extrapolating out a percentage of that unit sales velocity that we're going to need to give away in order to be able to rank for in that position. And so we just kind of have so much data from other giveaways where it kind of, we had multiple, multiple categories that this, these product launches were going on in and just kind of comparing and contrasting. It varied between like 20% and 50% of the BSR, like the unit sales BSR. So you'd have to give away like half of the monthly unit sales in order to rank for that position in really competitive categories. It was like, this is like uh, vitamins and consumables and stuff like that all the way down to like 20, 15 to 20% you could in like the less competitive categories. So um, yeah, that was kind of just a cool takeaway that uh, in a way that we're kind of gauging roughly about how much we need to give away in order to be able to hit certain rank thresholds on, on Amazon. Yeah. Something else that can work really well is if you are a brand that has a strong social media game, like you have an Instagram or whatever, and you got a good, good amount of followers, you can just create a new post pin it to the top of your feed or whatever they call it. And you can just say DM us and then like some code and for a free product or whatever. And you can even like put a picture up of that, of that product. And then people will DM you. And the reason why this is great is because you can tell people all you got to do is buy the product on Amazon, leave us a five-star review, take a screenshot of that and send us that. And we will reimburse you via, uh, via PayPal or Venmo or whatever. And that is against technically Amazon's terms of service. If Amazon, you know, you're allowed to ask people for a review. You are not allowed to ask them for a good review or a positive review. Like what a lot of sellers have gotten in trouble with is they would, they would put slips in the packaging that would say, Hey, if you like our product, leave a review. If you don't like our product, give us a call and we'll make it right, which sounds great, but you're technically telling people like, if you don't like it, don't leave a review. And so you're kind of manipulating the reviews in a sense. And so Amazon, I think they would like periodically like open a package or, or maybe they maybe just like a package broke and they would open it. And when they see that, they basically suspend the product and you run into a, a ton of trouble. But Amazon can't check your DMs. So uh, I think it's a pretty, pretty safe way. Uh, I guess it's up to your conscience on on whether or not you're you're OK with, uh, you know, deploying that gray hat tactic to, to get those reviews. But I mean, I personally don't have any problems with it. I think it's a, a good way just to kind of engage with your your audience, your followers, and also, I mean, you can still get honest feedback from them, but just ask them to, you know, keep it in the DMs and not on your <laughs> on your listing. And and I think if people really like a brand, that they'd be more than willing to do that. So, yeah, Stephen, that is such a great point. If you're coming onto Amazon and you already have that social following on Instagram, or you have an email list that you can potentially tap into as an additional way to get some visibility and awareness around your new product, 
you're already in a much better position than than most brands or most new people coming onto the platform. Uh, but at the end of the day, those those platforms, those social platforms, your email, whatever it may be, those are just additional sources, incremental sources of traffic that you can point to Amazon and drive additional traffic from outside Amazon to the platform where you can start seeing those sales. So Stephen, let's transition and talk a little bit about some of the different ways you can drive external traffic or internal traffic to Amazon and through Amazon. So this is, after all, that Amazon ads podcast. A lot of you guys are probably thinking, why didn't they talk about ads this whole entire episode? Well, now is is that time. So this is where a lot of people think, and, and, and the part of why we, we haven't talked about ads yet is because people think that PPC is the secret to achieving a ton of sales volume profitably and quickly. And they think PPC is just this, that, that magical element that's going to make it all happen if you just know the right day parting single keyword campaign strategy, it can happen. And the reason why we didn't talk about ads yet is because there's so much more that goes into it. First of all, picking, you know, what side of the triangle you want to be on, understanding that Amazon's from the very start going to start uh, taking that that item query data and throwing that into their ranking models. And then you've really just got to have that listing perfect. You got to have those reviews. And once you've done all of that, you've, you've determined your strategy, then you can start running the ads. Don't just do what, unfortunately, some of my clients have done, which is they literally just throw up a listing. It's like got one image, uh, like a title that's only three words long, no description. And they're just like, hey, you know, we have a bunch of these like in in uh, Amazon's warehouse. We haven't got a chance to do the listings. Can you just like put some ad spend behind and see what happens? And we do. And then the ACoS is like 5,000%. Uh, no exaggeration. That's literally the ACoS on it because the conversion rate's like less than 1% and the CPCs are like three, four bucks. So don't do that. After you've done everything else we've talked about thus far, and it's time to start turning on some Amazon ads traffic, there are probably three tips to Amazon PPC that I would give someone for these product launches. Number one is focus on brand defense if you have a brand with a lot of good recognition. So for one of our brands, you know, they've got probably 15 products in the catalog. They, they, do, they, they spend like 30K a month on ads and 10% of that spend is all from branded search volume because they get a, a good amount. So the best the best strategy, in, in my opinion, and Amazon reps have, have also recommended this, but when you have that new product, make that kind of like the sole brand defender. Maybe you have like two or three products that are low on reviews. One of them's like brand new. That's what you want to dominate that whole top of search with because if people are typing in your brand name, you likely are, are it's a lot easier to sell to a loyal audience that is already familiar with you, already looking for you. And when they see one of your newer products, it has no reviews. To anyone else that just sees a product on Amazon with no reviews, it's sketchy. But someone who recognize your, recognizes your brand and, and has purchased from you in the past and they love your products, when they see a brand new product with no reviews, they're probably excited to buy it, especially if they're in that like early adopter kind of audience category. They're going to be excited to try out a new product and very likely leave you that review. So, you, so you're pitching to a very warm audience, a very friendly audience. And that's a great way to just help a new new product get get started. If you don't have a lot of brand recognition, I would also uh, try to focus on what we call like the bottom of funnel traffic. So, you know, your brand, your branded keywords are like the bottom of the bottom of the funnel. But then going one level higher, it's going to be extremely relevant keywords. Uh, a lot of times longer tail keywords. I would not focus on auto campaigns. I, I wouldn't really do that from the the get-go, Andrew, why do you think I recommend not doing autos for, for a brand new product? I would just say that you're trying to limit the exposure and visibility on irrelevant keywords and you run the risk of potentially doing that a little bit more in autos and wasting a little bit more Pretty money. Pretty much. Yeah. So, and and the, this actually came from uh, Destiny with Sean with Better Media. She, she made a really good uh, video on this, I think like two years ago, but she took a brand new product versus a product with a lot of sales history. And then she she created a new manual campaign and she looked at the suggested keywords for each of those. For one of the products that had a ton of sales history, uh, all of the keywords that Amazon was suggesting for the manual campaign were highly relevant. For the brand new product, the suggested keywords were all over the map because Amazon doesn't really know what it is yet because they haven't been testing it and you know collecting a ton of data around like what are the, the search terms that are converting. Once they find out, which search terms are driving sales for this product, 
that tells them, that gives them a better idea of what your product is, and they can be a lot more accurate with, with their search engine. Before you have any sales history, though, it's extremely likely that they're going to have to do a lot of testing and experimentation they don't really know yet, and you're going to end up with a ton of irrelevant traffic. So that's why I wouldn't do an auto campaign until Amazon's suggested keywords look right. And so that's because those suggested keywords are basically telling you like what the auto campaign is going to try to do. So I wouldn't do an auto from the very beginning. I would just focus on some highly relevant broad and phrase match keywords that will kind of take take the place of an auto campaign because it's just guaranteeing at least some element of relevancy. But yeah, just just focus on like the lowest hanging fruits. Try to try to drive uh, those as many of those sales as possible. Don't focus on you know short tail, super competitive, single keyword campaigns. Uh, it's just very likely you're going to be getting extremely high CPCs with really low conversion rate, and it's just not going to work unless if you're unless if you're in that rank driven strategy. But there's a lot of other lower hanging fruit and opportunities to drive sales with uh, just some some longer phrase match kind of research type keywords and your brand defense campaigns. Yeah, I like that. Uh, definitely, have seen that work really well on uh, brand defense for PPC. I see it seems like it works a little bit better. I've tried it in DSP as well, where we're going after oh, loyalty true, yeah. audiences for new products and stuff. That didn't work right. as well for us. That that was just nope. my experience. But hmm. it seemed yeah, we got a lot of traffic, but a lot of them were just clicking and then they are are viewing and then they ended up purchasing something else uh, from the brand. Never driving any sort of uh, same skew sales velocity. Same for skew us, sales, so. yeah. Yeah. So anyway, good points. Um, yeah. So love that on, I got nothing really further to add on the PPC side of things for new product launches. I think that's pretty well said. Um, the only other piece I was going to add was, you know, just whenever you start to look outside of Amazon, because there's only a couple levers you have within Amazon to drive traffic. You got PPC, you've got organic, and then maybe DSP. But, um, most of the brands that I see succeeding well on Amazon and, and really coming on the platform, new brands exploding, doing really good growth on Amazon, it's because they have external traffic sources that are driving that awareness, driving that visibility, creating that intrigue and branded search traffic on Amazon. So uh, a lot of these are really big on TikTok. You know, that's, that's like one of the best opportunities, the biggest platforms for organic growth and organic reach right now. Um, and a lot of brands that are succeeding really well are good at producing viral content on TikTok, whether it be them, them they themselves through the their brand page and, and their in-house creative team or their agency that they're working with, whatever, putting out really quality content that's, that does a good job of getting visibility and traction on TikTok. And that just kind of trickles over to Amazon, which is kind of where all the conversion is captured for the awareness and everything that they're building on all these other platforms. Um, and so one of the biggest things that brands are doing on TikTok and on Instagram that you can learn from and that you can start to employ is leveraging affiliates or influencers. So not only should you be trying to get the word out about your product through your own channels, but you should be trying to enroll people in your vision for your brand and get them to speak highly about your product on their platforms and reach more and more people that way. The, the brands that are doing really well are partnering with uh, affiliates and influencers on TikTok and Instagram on a regular basis, whether it be 30 different influencers up to, I've heard as high as 350 in uh, specific influencer partnerships every single month where brands are giving away free product to these influencers in exchange for them going and creating videos and posting that video on their social following, all their social platforms and reaching their followers and um, this is something that I've seen work really well uh, at stimulating that external traffic driving back to Amazon. There's a couple different platforms that are kind of coming out right now that are geared towards helping brands partner and find those affiliates. So things like Archer Affiliates, there was another one at Accelerate called Levanta that I heard about, sounded pretty similar. Uh, but those types of things are are popping up as as real opportunities for new sellers, new brands, and an additional way for sellers to reach influencers with big audiences and big reach and big influence that can then go and post and talk about your product. Have you been using Archer Affiliates? So we signed up for it and based on the category for the brand that I was working with, um, they were telling us that the affiliate commissions were 
between like 80 and 90 percent so basically it would Oof. be like losing money on everything um yeah and so they weren't willing to do that and so just with with how our products are set up i think like 20 25 percent affiliate commission the we aren't getting any claims or we're getting very few just like a few you know mm -hmm. only a handful of influencers that are actually like hey like i'll promote that for 25 percent or whatever so yeah you just have to be more aggressive with the what you're willing to give away and what you're willing to do you got to kind of think of it as a loss leader to help generate that buzz and that's going to trickle down to the rest of your products and everything so yeah at the end of the day it's just uh all you got to do is drive traffic and get reviews that's like the the strategy the only question is how quickly can you do it and how much are you willing to invest so that is why whenever people ask i mean that's why we did this episode because people ask us all the time just like hey i launched a new product what should my budget be <laughs> like what it's like hey i launched a new i launched a new product what should my starting bids be it's like dude i have no idea like have is your do you have an established brand or is it a completely new thing like what category is it how competitive is it do you have reviews all these other things so that's all of the uh additional points of consideration that need to be taken into account but i do want to address quickly that question what should my starting bids be we have a whole other episode where we talk about what your starting bid should be so go watch that one just Go to our channel, type in starting bids, and you'll find it. Uh, but the the short answer here, I would just say is, well, let's, let's back up, Andrew. What should your target A costs be? Because that's another question that we get. So what would, you, what would you recommend someone, you know, new product launch? Let's say they have like two or three other products. So very small, but but not, not like a major brand, but also not their very first product ever. So they just got one new product coming out. What, what would you say their, their target A cost should be? My general rule for that kind of situation is target break even, but only if you absolutely have to. Um, so maybe that as a starting point, you're you're looking to just break even on the products, and then you kind of gauge and see, you know, your conversion rates, your CPCs that you're dealing with, um, and then you can kind of adjust from there. But yeah, you know, sometimes it requires you to go above break even initially too. So maybe like cap it at like two times break even. You know, you got to be signing up to lose money there, but. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, for a launch, you need to be targeting break even if you need to. If you need to go a little higher to be competitive, you can. But um, yeah, mostly just kind of looking to see if we can get a better efficiency than than break even. Ideally, are you saying break even on just the the A cost or break even on the ad cost of total sales, including the organic? Break even A cost. So you're going to target in ads your break even total A cost. Wait, uh, why? <laughs> I feel like you just said both. <laughs> Maybe I misheard you. Your, your, your target ACOS, ACOS, yeah. Your your target ACOS in ads uh -huh. should be yeah. your break even ACOS without ads. So your pre ad profit per sale, that okay. whole thing. You know, you should target in ads. Your target ACOS should be that break even percentage, whatever that is. Um, gotcha. Because you're basically saying it be that higher. You're. Yeah, that's what I said. You could go up to two times that as like your, you yeah. know, two times your break even would be kind of like pushing the limits. And then um, I'm saying that you should only do that if you need to. Like you're not always going to have to target uh, break even in order to be competitive in searches. And in most, of case, most cases, you're not. But you're targeting that break even from, you know, pre-ad perspective, betting that you're going to get at least one organic sale with every PPC sale that you got. So it should balance out to about half of that. Yeah. Yeah. I would think you should try. So yeah, if, if let's just say 50% of your sales are coming from ads, then I would say you should try to be breaking even on the total sales, including the organic sales, which would mean like just the advertising ACOS is actually 2X your, your break even. And then, yeah. And, and the reason why yep. I say that is just because your, your conversion rates are going to be so low from the beginning. So you know, if, if you launch a new product and you're only getting like a two to 4% conversion rate until you get those reviews and, and get better ranking, like eventually you can get up to like an eight to 10 X, sorry, eight to 10% conversion rate. And, you know, you're, I think you're just gonna have to run the, the ads at a loss and hopefully break even once the organic is taken into account, but you might even need to be running on a loss at a loss altogether, depending on how, how competitive the category is. 
Yeah, so, most most people now, are, and and when they're launching, especially brands, like they're definitely more in a position to be willing to lose money in those first like two to six months on a product in order to be able to get it to be established and uh, be a continual profit driver for them. So, and then as it pertains to starting bids, the answer there for calculating what should your starting bid be uh, would be revenue per click times target ACOS, as you've, as you've heard us say before on all of our bidding episodes. But if you haven't run any ads before, that revenue per click would, because we don't have like, you know, PPC data, it would be the revenue per session if you're in Seller Central or revenue per, uh, I guess, glance views if you are on the vendor central side of things. So you're just going to take the total sales, divide that by the total sessions, and then you would multiply that by your target ACOS, which should be around break even or perhaps two uh, x your break even, and then you can you can figure that out. So, and if you don't have any sales yet at all, and you're like I have zero sales and zero sessions, then I would say okay, well then just you know put a little bit of traffic in until you get one sale. Which you know you don't have to wait like you know two or four weeks of just like running PPC at a loss. Just like wait until you get that sale, figure out what what that that uh revenue per session is, and then you can calculate from there. All right. Very well said. We talk about all this in the masterclass. So if you aren't currently in there, make sure you sign up and get into that. Uh, a lot of very good value in there. We talk a lot about launches. We talk about, you know, the backbone of what actually goes into having a successful product launch and a successful product on Amazon. So check that out. Be linked up in the description. Steven, anything else before we go? I think the coupon code might still be active by the time this episode airs. So on our last episode, we had Stefan come on and tell us that we should be offering everyone a discount with his name. So S-T-E-F-A-N, Stefan from Romania is telling you to get the masterclass and, and he uh, convinced us to put a 50% off disc discount with his name. So use that if it still works. Love it. All right. Be sure to like and subscribe. Become that yeah, come back next week for another episode of That Amazon Has Podcast. We'll see you later. Peace out.